Bonjour. Comment ça va? Quoi ça dit? Qui ça dit? Ça dit, on va continuer nos leçons avec le français louisianais. Yes, we will continue our lessons today in Louisiana French. Thank you for joining us today. Merci beaucoup. Uh, I'm, well, my hat looks a little crooked. Oh, fix it. Mon beau chapeau, là. Ça, c'est mon chapeau. Je porte mon chapeau parce que tu connais mes cheveux sont, c'est les cheveux de matin, yeah. Try to avoid my morning bed head, so wear my little hat there. Uh, <laughs> thank you all for joining us today. Um, uh, for those of you who are just joining us, I'm Kirby Jambon, and we've been doing lessons in Louisiana French. Um, and uh, you will be able to see um, these lessons on the, my YouTube channel. I have already so far eight lessons that are done so far. And um, if you'd like to follow along with the documents that I'm using as a guide for these lessons, please Facebook message me, uh, Kirby Jambon, and um, I will put you into the Louisiana French Lessons chat group. I've attached the lessons, the, the document I used for the first eight videos. It's there this morning, and I also attached uh, the one I'm going to be using for the next series of lessons as well that's attached there as well. So, so please uh, feel free to, to download those and uh, their Word documents, and uh, you can use them to follow along. Alrighty, very good. So before we get started with today's lesson, let's just talk a little bit about again of what Louisiana French is. When we use the term Louisiana French, we're speaking about the variety of French which is spoken in South Louisiana by native French speakers who it might identify as Cajun or Creole or different Native American groups uh, or other just a generally a French Louisianian in general. Um, it is Cajun French in the sense that it is, uh, you know, it is pretty much the same language of what we call Cajun French. I'm a Cajun, so I can also call it Cajun French, but it's also not a Cajun French because it's just Cajun French because there are more than just Cajuns who speak it. So we tend to use that term there, Louisiana French, more often. But you may still also hear like there's an older book called the Cajun French Language right there. You have those books as well. What it is not is it's not a language. Uh, it's not the Cajun language. Um, um, this is a good dictionary that was, uh, that, that was made, a lot of good information in there. In fact, all of this dictionary is also in that dictionary of Louisiana French. But... The, in the preface, he describes it as being a language just in the sense that how French came from uh, Latin, Cajun came from French. Well, yes, French did come from Latin, and Cajun, but Cajun, is, uh, or Cajun or Louisiana French is a variety of the language. Uh, just to explain why, for example, the majority of what you would say in Latin, the majority of what you say in French would not be understood amongst each other. But the majority of the things you would say in Louisiana French would be understood internationally, but there are differences. Uh, one of the differences in Louisiana French that we're going to find is that due to the fact that uh, for many years Louisiana, uh, Louisiana French was oppressed. Uh, Louisiana French was not taught in schools, in fact was punished. My mother was beaten and punished for speaking the only language she knew. Uh, as a result, most Louisianians who spoke this language did not have a chance to be educated as well in the language, to learn a more uh, an international standard variety of language as well, for good or for bad. Um, and um, so there, there are some differences because of that. So, you know, some, by example, some person who might live in Montreal in Canada or Nova Scotia in Canada both speak different varieties of French, but uh, they could still communicate uh, probably very well. Probably both of them might have had the chance to be educated in French. Uh, someone who speak, uh, speaks a different variety of French, like from Belgium, would speak differently from them as well, or, you know, from south of France would speak differently. But all are able to communicate um, because they've been educated in a more standard variety of language as well. Louisianians didn't always get that opportunity. But however, I must say that despite that fact, we're still able to communicate. Um, uh, I've told jokes in Louisiana French in France and they all laughed, you know, so it proves, you, um, it proves that point. Um, um, when I was a kid, I remember my, growing up, my dad, um, my dad said that, um, my dad showed me those points from time to time. My dad, my parents were, all, were always proud of the fact that they were Cajuns and they were always proud to speak French with, um, with whomever they met uh, who spoke French. Um, but as a kid, my dad would, tells me stories. I don't have any memories of this, that, you know, as a little kid, I would like, uh, I would, uh, you know, want to, um, didn't want to speak the French language, you know, uh, you know, I would be outside. Uh, I, I thought I was Batman. I'd pretend I was in my little Batmobile outside playing and my dad would tell me something like, you know, Kirby, uh, rentre à la maison, nettoie ta chambre, you know, Kirby, come inside and clean your room, you know. And I would do so, I would pretend like I didn't understand, you know, something like, oh, Batman don't speak no French, you know, something like that. I don't know. Uh, and then my dad would dire, hey, Batman, tu devrais rentrer dans ton bat cave et nettoyer ta bat chambre avant que ton bat derrière va faire mal. 
Well, maybe not exactly that like that. <laughs> but yes, I did get inside in my bat cave and cleaned it before uh, I had problems with my bat daddy. Yeah, but uh, I exaggerate. But of course, I have no memory of that. Uh, but one thing I do have a memory of, one time we were in Disney World, a little older when I was an older teenager, and uh, we were in uh, Disney World. And you know, in Disney World, you have the Epcot Center, and we visited France, and we ate the French restaurant, and it was a French server from France. And my parents, of course, began to have a conversation with him, my dad speaking to him at length in French. And uh, and I'm, I, I had this like the head, I had the, the typical teenage kind of look like head down. Oh, dad, it's not the same French, you know. And then, of course, after about 10 minutes or so having a nice conversation, uh, my dad would look at me and go, na, 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 something like that. So, uh, so it is, you know, the languages can be very much understood. It is uh, very much understood. So we'll continue to teach these languages as well. Now. One more, one thing I want to talk about is that there are differences, and that's what we're here to point out. And because variety is the spice of life, and we're pointing out, and I, um, you know, although I've studied international French and standard French, um, I much prefer speaking the language that I grew up with, the French language I grew up with. And but I can also communicate with people around the world because of a, because of that fact. And so when I, so I'm going to teach some of these change, these different varieties, uh, different variations, I should say, within the language. A couple of things I want to point out is variations still within Louisiana. One of them we talked about already, and that was the variation with the word qui and quoi. You know, like I come from a region where we would say qui to mean what, and in two thirds of the state they would say quoi to mean what. Okay. Another variation is that uh, I mentioned this a little bit before is that there are Louisianians who identify themselves probably as Cajun, who probably even have Acadian last names, who call the language they speak French. But linguists would call the language they speak a Creole, a Creole, Louisiana Creole. Some people would call it a Creole French. And, um, but, uh, and there are some differences, and I'll point out those differences every now and then, okay? Uh, I'm not an expert in Creole in any sense, but I do understand Creole very well, and I've communicated with many people in Creole throughout the years. Um, and I, I would speak my variety of French, and they would speak their variety of Creole, and we would communicate. So, but it is considered, it is distinct enough to be considered a different language linguistically, but it is, it is, uh, it is uh, you know, the people who live next to people who speak Creole and don't speak Creole can communicate with them. So, what we're going to do right now is just talk, point, well, one little example of Creole is, for example, in the verb aller, from what I understand. For example, the verb aller in Louisiana French, to go, all right, um, which is pronounced like va, like je va, to go, all right, uh, I'm going to go, je vais aller, okay? In, um, in Creole, one of the variations of that is you'll find that aller becomes the verb courir, courir, which is in uh, Louisiana French, which is in international French as well, which is to run. So uh, they'll hear courir. So you might hear something. I heard one fellow from Catahoula one time, he told me, uh, instead of saying je vais aller, he did moi les courir. Mo, aller courir. Mo, moi, me, aller to, uh, uh, going to uh, courir. Going to run, going to go. Moi courir. So courir was using to mean to go. Um, and I always thought, well, if courir is to, is to go, what I used to run. Well, one of the variations of to run I found is galope. Uh, well, galope. Um, one of my favorite songs uh, by one of my favorite musicians, Clifton Chenier, he says, um, um, Reste pas là à pegar la ta bouche. You know? And don't stay there uh, running your mouth. You know? So um, you use the word galope, to gallop, meaning to run. And so um, it's quite interesting, you know, there has some variations. And so we'll talk about these variations all the time, but um, uh, from time to time. Okay, so let's get to today's lesson. Uh, it's in the new packet, as I said. And this lesson is uh, focusing on the past tense, using the past tense. The basic past tense is the form we call the passé composé, or the compound past. And the compound past, um, uses the form of, of the verb avoir, which is to have. Um, we see that um, in Louisiana French, it's, it's also pronounced avoir. Uh, it's, a, it's a common thing in Acadian French, Old Acadian French, Louisiana French, that the VW, you tend to drop the V. So you have, a, like for example, with the verb to see, voir, and the verb to have, av, avoir, is pronounced war, ou avoir, very often. Um, and so, You'll see that in Louisiana French. You're like, uh, you know, to uh, you hear that pronunciation, I should say. So you use the past tense form 
to make, I'm sorry, you use the uh, forms of the verb avoir to make the past tense. So you're not actually saying when you say it, for example, if I wanted to say, um, you, um, you went to say uh, you danced, I'm not actually saying you have danced, but it's the way it's written. It's like you have danced, okay? So let me give you an example. Let's go through those uh, forms of the verb avoir, okay? Ready? Let's go j'ai, which is I have, sometimes pronounced um, uh, ja. Uh, sometimes pronounced ha in the region I was just uh, the region where I'm from in Louisiana French. Oh, let me make that point. And where I'm from in uh, Lafouche Parish, um, the je sound in the south, the southern part of the parish is pronounced like an H. So you'll hear things like uh, instead of the 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 j or the ja it becomes ha uh, or he. Okay, uh, you'll hear that kind of pronunciation as well. Um, just to make a point of that, um, it is a it is a pronunciation found in some other varieties of French. You'll find that in a, in for example in um, Nova Scotia, they uh, um, uh, and in parts of Quebec. And I heard in old varieties of um, French in France, they have that. You know, you hear it in Spanish as well, the H uh, for the J for the H. Um, but um, I mean, I have friends from Nova Scotia. We we both share the same common ancestors, and both of us grew up hearing the H sound. Uh, for the sound je. So, for example, I, for my name, Hombon, you should have Jean Bon, it's pronounced Hombon. Like, for example, like I say, Moi, j'ai déjà mangé du Hombon aujourd'hui pour mon déjeuner. Yeah, Moi, j'ai déjà mangé du jambon aujourd'hui pour mon déjeuner. I already ate some ham today for my breakfast. So, that would be a, that would be a part of the H. So, but let's get back to this page, okay? We're in the first page in the packet. So, you have ta, which is you are, ila, he, uh, I'm sorry, ta is you have, ila, he has, Allah, uh, she has, on a, we have, vous avez, which is the formal with respect for the older persons uh, uh, of you, uh, the plural you, vous autres a, and the they again, we're talk, we'll talk more about the they later, but there's different, variety, different varieties of they. You might hear, ils ont, uh, eux a, eux sont, eux autres a, eux autres sont, uh, ça a, things like, different things like that. And then basically what you're going to do is you're going to take, after that, you're going to put whatever verb you're using. So if you take, for example, take that list of verbs we used the other day. I think it was on page seven in the packet. Um, if you take that list of verbs, you just can put it right after that. And you're still going to hear that ER sound at the end of it, uh, that ER, which sounds like E. But you're going to spell it with an E with an accent. E accent aigu, we call that. And so you're going to hear things. For example, let me show you the difference. All right. I eat. Je mange. I ate. J'ai mangé. You eat, tu manges. You ate, ta mangé. He eats, il mange. He ate, il a mangé. Okay, you see that difference there? Let's try it with the verb uh, danser, which is to dance. Okay, uh, we dance, on danse. We danced, on a dansé. All right, she dances, a danse. She danced, à la danse. Okay, uh, y'all dance, vous autres danse. Y'all danced. Uh, vous êtes à danser. Okay? And I show you all those examples again on page one. Okay? Now I'm going to give you a little practice for our next video. Um, um, I think I'm going to make the next video. It's Friday, so I'll put, they'll put the next video out on Monday morning. Okay? So I'll give you the whole weekend to practice on this. Okay? And on page two, you're going to see these phrases. I'm going to read them for you. And they're missing a verb. They're missing one of the verbs from page seven. I tell you the verbs that are missing on the next page, top of the next page, right here, the top of the next verbs, the next page, okay? I give you some hints to some of the words and the phrases, see if you can figure out what they mean, but you can use the LSU Cajun French website to help you out with that, okay? But I'll, right, I'll do the pronunciations for you right now, so you, so you follow along with me. So let's just listen to it. I'm going to say wherever there's the blank, I'm going to hear the word blank. For what I understand, the word blank comes from the, the French word um, uh, blanc, which means white. Um, I'm not sure, but I think so. All right, but I'll just say blank wherever the blank is there, okay? Listen to this. J'ai blank mon meilleur linge pour aller à l'église dimanche matin. Ma femme a blank le souper pour moi parce que j'étais tard. Ta blank mon cœur et quand tu m'as quitté pour t'en aller avec un autre. Ma fille, tu vas tomber parce que t'as pas blank tes souliers. Qui a blank du bon manger pour nous autres à soir? Les enfants en blank, dehors dans la boue, après la pluie. Et je peux pas compter tout l'argent que j'ai blank à ma fille pour aller au magasin. Ça m'a blank beaucoup quand vous m'avez blank comment arranger mon char. 
So you have to find the verbs that would go in here. Now the verbs that you're going to be using on this page are listed on this page. Um, uh, the meanings are also on the other page, but I'll go through them with you. There's ede to help, casse to break, donner to give, jouer to play, montrer to show or to teach in Louisiana French as well. Porte can mean to wear. It can also mean to bring, uh, to carry. In this sense, it means to, to wear. Réchauffer, to heat up or reheat. Omare or amare, which means to tie in Louisiana French. And omne or omne, which means to bring. Okay. Now, some other words in the phrases that you might help you on that, on that page. Argent, which is money. Coeur, heart. Store, magasin. Some reasons a magasin is a barn and they use boutique for store, but if you think about it, they both have this idea of where you store things, okay? Soupe is supper. Mm -hmm. Boo, mud. Mm -hmm. Église, église is church. Parce que, because. Soulier is shoes. Now, internationally, the, they use the term chaussure pour shoes, um, but I've heard lately that they use soulier for some kind of fancy type of shoe, I think, in France these days. I don't know. But it was it is an old French word for shoes. You might also hear the word savate, which can also mean slippers in Louisiana French, but we typically use the word soulier for shoes. Char, which is car. Internationally, it's voiture. You may also hear automobile, which would be an automobile, but we typically use the word char. Okay. Lange, the word for clothes. We use the word lange or we use the word déshabit, du linge ou des habits. For clothes. Um, internationally, uh, they use vêtements. Lange is pretty much reserved for, uh, I think, more for um, laundry, but we use that for clothes. Okay. Puis, puis is rain. This is the noun form of rain, not the verb mouiller, but puis, or pronounced la puis, uh, with the with the feminine. The L is not pronounced in there. In that, um, in there, it's la puis. We don't pronounce the L. You know, often I thought a lot of times these different pronunciations. Maybe we just got lazy, or the language we just. We weren't, we weren't educating the France, in French, but it's not the case. Um, I have another old book here, this book here, that a friend of mine in France gave me. Um, and um, um, merci uh, Raymond pour le cadeau, uh, uh, à La Rochelle. My friend Raymond in La Rochelle gave me this book. And it's Le Glossaire des Vieux par les Poids de Vin. So that means it's the glossary of the old way they used to speak around the Poitou and uh, Poitiers region of France, I believe. And so, and... Uh, I found pre listed in here that say the same way we say it. So it's not, a, we didn't change the word. It's an old way of pronouncing it. In fact, there's a lot of things in here, a lot of things in here which would also be found up there in that dictionary, Louisiana French, a lot of things. Um, okay, and the last word is tar, which is late, in which we're getting a little tar right now. All right, so you're going to try to put those, um, You're going those will help you to figure out what those words mean. Try to put those verbs into these phrases. Let's do the first one together, and then we'll review the rest next time, okay? J'ai blanc mon meilleur linge pour aller à l'église dimanche matin. So the J before a verb tells you it's in the past tense. So I'm on a verb in that blank. Mon meilleur linge means my best linge we just did, which is clothes. Uh, pour aller, aller we did, which is to go. L'église we just read, which means church. And dimanche we did before, which is Sunday. So I did something with my best clothes or my nicest clothes, you could say in a sense, to go to church Sunday morning. And of course, the only verb which would fit there is porte. Yes, I wore my best clothes to I get it. But again, when we'd write it, we wouldn't write the E or we'd write it with the e, uh, accent, the E with the accent. Okay, so try that out for next time. And I will be back with the lesson on Monday morning with another lesson. I'll do, try to do lessons Monday, Wednesday, Friday. That'll be probably a, a good way to do it. Okay, and uh, so, and you, maybe you va, tu vas porter ton meilleur linge pour aller à l'église dimanche matin. Or, uh, I don't think so because why we're doing? We're gonna go, <laughs> we're gonna stay. You two are l'église dans ta chambre. You're gonna stay or in your house, you should say. You're, we're not gonna go. We're not gonna go there. We're gonna continue our social distancing. We're gonna continue taking care of one another. On va se soigner les uns et les autres. Il faut qu'on s'aime, il faut qu'on se soigne. We need to love each other and take care of each other during this time. It's really important, and that's why I'm doing that. So uh, je veux vous uh, vous soigner, je veux vous aimer, je veux vous dire hey. Uh, parler français avec les autres. Ok? Au revoir!